Hello everyone, and welcome to War in Middle-Earth, The War of the Ring, a multi-part series on the final and most important conflict of the Third Age, where new heroes would rise and old villains would fall. In this episode, we look at the northern theatre of The War of the Ring, The War in the North. Even as Sauron's armies fought beneath the walls of Minas Tirith, tens of thousands of his soldiers marched on other lands, intent on setting the northern lands ablaze. In the previous episode, we focused on the colossal battle of the Pelennor Fields, this battle ended on the 15th of March, and saw almost the complete destruction of the Morgul host, and the defeat of Sauron's Manish allies such as the Haradrim and the Corsairs. But this battle was only one of several major battles going on at this time. Gondor, and by extension Rohan, was Sauron's main focus, but it was not his only focus. As covered in my Prelude to War episode, Sauron had foes aplenty in the Northern Lands, the Dwarves of Erebor and the Iron Hills the Elves of Mirkwood, the Elves of Lothlorien, the Kingdom of Dale, and even minor forces such as the Beornings or the Woodmen of Mirkwood. As part of Sauron's ultimate victory, these realms and peoples would have to be destroyed, or at the very least, subjugated. And Sauron had learned from his past mistakes. During the War of the Last Alliance, he had only struck Gondor, allowing his other enemies in the north to unify and eventually defeat him in battle. This time, he was using a new strategy, divide and conquer. If he attacked all of his enemies at the same time, none of them would be able to help each other, or at least that was the plan. Even if it meant that he wasn't attacking each enemy with his full strength, it would grind them down, and Sauron could afford to fight a war of attrition. Once one enemy fell, the rest of them would surely begin to fall like dominoes. There's already been action in the north since at least mid-January when the Fellowship first arrived in Lothlorien and a large band of Moria Orcs pursued them. It did not end well for the Orcs. When Frodo sits upon the Seat of Seeing at Amon Hen on the 26th of February, he sees fires in the lands of the Beornings, Orcs on the move across the length of the Misty Mountains, large armies of Easterlings pouring in from the east, and he also sees men and elves fighting fell creatures beneath the trees of Mirkwood. But these are mere skirmishes compared to what Sauron is about to unleash. On the 10th of March, the same date the Morgul host sets forth, armies spill forth from Dol Guldur and Sauron's other strongholds, and march out in every direction. On the 11th, the first of these armies reaches their destination. The force of orcs invades Rohan from the north. We're not sure where this army comes from, whether they're mountain orcs who cross the Limlight, or whether they're Dol Guldur orcs who cross the Undeeps. I'm going to assume it's the latter. Theoden is actually aware of this force, as when his army is riding towards Gondor, they cross paths with refugees from the Eastmark, fleeing across the River Snowborn. However, Theoden's course is set, and he can do nothing but entrust Rohan to the defenders he has left behind, which seem to number a few thousand at least. The same day, an army from Dol Guldur launches an assault upon Lothlorien, we're not sure of the direction they actually attacked from, they may have crossed the River Anduin using specially built boats, or alternatively, they may have crossed the Undeeps in Rohan and then attacked Lothlorien from the south. Either way, Lothlorien's border erupts into battle, and there's heavy fighting beneath the Malorn trees. As far as we know, this is the first time Sauron has launched a full-scale attack against the Lothlorien Elves. By the 12th, at least one of these assaults has failed, the attack on Rohan. The Orcs get more than they bargained for, and are surprised to run into a force of Ents, who make short work of the invasion. Given that the invasion lasted only a single day, the Orcs probably didn't make it out of the sparsely populated region of the Wold, meaning that the invasion probably did very little damage. Although Theoden doesn't know it as he rides east, he can rest assured that his lands are once again safe for the time being. As for the assault on Lothlorien, we're unsure whether it has ended or continues to rage on by this date. The 13th sees no new engagements in the Northern Theatre, but the 14th brings a huge threat from the East, an army of Easterlings. The Easterlings had always been a threat to the Kingdom of Dale's eastern borders, and finally they cross the River Carnan and drive King Brand back. King Brand retreats and then gathers his forces beneath the feet of Erebor, the Lonely Mountain, and there he is joined by an army of Longbeards led by King Dane II Ironfoot, a veteran of many battles by this point. The Easterlings arrive shortly afterwards, and the Battle of Dale is joined. 
The Battle of Dale is a mighty battle, perhaps the largest of the entire war besides the Battle of Pelennor Fields, and it rages beneath Erebor for three days. However, on the 17th, it's clear that the Easterlings have the upper hand. King Brand is killed in the fighting, and King Dane stands over the body of his ally, defending it until he too is overwhelmed. At the time of his death, he is 252 years old. The battle lost, the new kings, Bard II and King Foran III Stonehelm, retreat into Erebor and shut the gates behind them. The Easterlings cannot breach the gates, so they set up for a lengthy siege, intent on starving out the mountain and forcing it to surrender. The city of Dale is captured and occupied by the Easterlings. I wanted to talk about the Battle of Dale a little more as there are several issues with the battle that can be identified within the timeline. I was originally planning on going over this in the video, but it ended up taking too long and I went way off topic. So you can find my observations about the Battle of Dale in the comment section, please do read it if you get a chance. While the Battle of Dale is raging beneath Erebor, two more battles begin on the 15th of March. An army from Dol Guldur, having travelled north through the dark woods of Mirkwood, reaches the realm of Thranduil. This is the battle under the trees. The Sylvan Elves aren't as mighty or well equipped as the Noldor or the Sindar of the Elder Days, but they have numbers, they have the home advantage, and they have experience, having just fought against the forces of Dol Guldur as recently as the previous year. The battle lasts the entirety of the day, and much of the forest is consumed by flame, but in the end, King Thranduil has the victory, and the forces of Dol Guldur are destroyed or driven back. The second battle of the 15th is fought in Lothlorien. The first battle ended sometime during the previous few days, and resulted in Sauron's forces being driven back. However, Sauron knows that Lothlorien will not fall easily, and he has accounted for that in his plans. Merely four days after the first assault began, the second assault begins, and the Galadrim once again find themselves fighting for their homeland. But their tenacity and the power of Galadriel and her Ring of Power, Nenya, is more than enough for the Orcs, and sometime during the 15th or the following days, the second assault is also thrown back. But Sauron is not about to give up on Lothlorien. On the 22nd of March, a week later, he launches his final offensive action in the north, and attacks Lothlorien for a third time. And like the previous two attempts, it is also defeated. With the defeat of Sauron's third assault on Lothlorien, the northern theatre mostly goes quiet. Sauron's offensives have largely ended in tactical failures. He launched six major attacks across the north, and five of them have been defeated for very little gain. Notably, all five of the attacks that failed were launched from Dol Guldur, giving it the worst win-loss ratio of the war. The only attack that met with success was the one against Dale and Erebor by the Easterlings, and even that attack hadn't yet claimed a total victory, not while the Dwarves and the Dale men still hold out inside the mountain. The attacks on Lothlorien were especially costly. Sauron had dedicated enough manpower and resources for three separate assaults, clearly expecting one or even two of his attacks to be defeated. Yet even three attacks wasn't enough, and the reality is, Sauron could have launched 10 attacks and still met with the same results. The fact of the matter was that no army of orcs would be able to overcome the power of Galadriel and Nenya, and if Sauron wanted to see Lothlorien fall, he would have had to journey there himself. But despite the losses, this isn't really a major disaster for Sauron. His goal of keeping his enemies from uniting has so far been achieved, with the exception of the Rohirrim making it to Gondor, but that was more of a Saruman failure. Even though his armies have so far been scattered or destroyed, Dol Guldur remains a mighty fortress, and Mordor is still unassailable. Time is on his side, and he will certainly win a war of attrition if that's what it comes down to. His northern enemies might be able to weather the storm for the moment, but they would not be able to do so forever, especially if Gondor fell in the south. The northern war isn't quite over yet. The Dwarves and Dalemen are trapped in Erebor, and the army of Easterlings encamped outside await their next move. Will they hope for help to come, or will they sally forth in a desperate attempt to break the siege? And although Dol Guldur has largely been emptied of its armies, the fortress still looms ominously to both the Elves of Lothlorien and Mirkwood. If they want to remove the immediate threat to their lands, Dol Guldur will have to be destroyed. But that's no easy task. These questions will be answered soon. But there are bigger events taking place in the south. The host of the west, victorious on the Pelennor field, is about to march forth and challenge Sauron outside the very gates of Mordor itself. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. 
I mentioned that I would write a little bit extra about the Battle of Dale, so check that out in the comments, I've pinned it. If you want to experience the War in the North, the Battle for Middle-earth 2 campaigns cover some of the important battles, although they do take some creative liberties, especially the evil campaign. Until the next video, thanks, farewell, and remember, if your first attack fails miserably, don't try the exact same thing two more times.